Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for Inlo Medical Center's Healthier You Facebook Live series, where today we are going to be conquering pelvic floor disorders. About one third of all US women suffer from pelvic floor disorders, according to the National Institute of Health. These conditions can be embarrassing, painful, and limiting, and due to their sensitive nature, many suffer in silence and avoid treatment. But women can conquer pelvic floor issues and get back to their normal activities. Hello, everyone. I'm Susie Lowry Hall, and I'm Inlo's Community Outreach Coordinator. And it is my pleasure to be here today with female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgeon, Dr. Melissa Dawson. Hi. Hello. Um, and today, she's going to be talking to us about this very important subject, the signs and symptoms of pelvic floor disorders and how women can get, the, um, get help. Um, before we get started, please know that the information we're about to share is not intended to be medical advice. If you have concerns about your own health, please reach out to your provider. And as always, if you have questions or comments, put them in the comment field and we'll do our best to answer them throughout the broadcast. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So thanks again for being here. Um, so we'll just start off if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and your specialty. So specifically, you're your urogynecologist. And yes. so what does that mean and how is that different from an OBGYN? Great question. Okay. So I'm OBGYN trained. So I did four years of allopathic training um, in OBGYN or delivered babies and did all women's health. Um, and then I transitioned to a specialty fellowship, which is an extra three years in female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. Okay. Um, so that really means that we focus in on the pelvic floor, the connections, the fascial connections, um, the muscles, the tissues, um, and really specialize in reconstructive women's surgery. Okay. Um, and with that said, a urogynecologist is, a, is just a, an OBGYN with a more, more expertise okay. on the pelvic floor. Um, and we deal with pelvic floor disorders, which include urinary dysfunction or incontinence, fecal incontinence, defecatory dysfunctions, and pelvic organ prolapse. Great. So that actually brings me to my next question, and that is, um, as you mentioned, pelvic floor disorders are very common, but what exactly are these and who do they affect? And another great question. Yeah. Um, so I just read another interesting fact that um, one in four women over the age of 20 actually suffer from pelvic floor dis yeah. disorders. Yes. Yeah. Um, pelvic floor disorders are usually classified as urinary uh, urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, and pelvic organ prolapse. Okay. Pelvic organ prolapse is um, descent of the pelvic organs in into the vagina. Um, so the bladder can fall, the rectum can fall, the uterus and cervix can fall down, um, or the vaginal cuff, if you've had a, a hysterectomy, don't have those organs anymore. They can come down and into the vagina, and eventually they can actually come out of the vagina making quality of life um, an issue. Yeah. Women don't like to talk about it or leave their houses, can cause anxiety and depression. So trying to get the word out, um, talk to women about it. The primary care physicians and their OBGYN should be able to initiate those conversations and okay. send to a specialist like myself. That's great. That's yeah. really helpful. So how would a no, I mean, it, you've described the symptoms, but how would a woman know she has this issue? And like, how do we make that connection? Absolutely. Yeah. Pelvic organ prolapse is um, a condition that basically we treat if you're symptomatic. So okay. if you feel a uh, very common symptom is like sitting on an egg or feeling a pressure or a heaviness in the vagina okay um that te tends to really lead me to more pelvic organ prolapse you can have other symptoms associated with it like urinary incontinence like i leak um can't make it to the bathroom on time gotta go gotta go yes. and when i cough laugh jump or sneeze i leak some urine um, also can cause some defecatory dysfunction so constipation and not being able to relieve your bowels or completely empty Okay. Um, but mainly pelvic organ prolapse is a symptom that you feel and a symptom that we treat only if you're symptomatic or feel those symptoms. Okay. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So what, um, so what are some of the conditions you treat here in your clinic? Um, and what does the treatment look like or what does that entail? Yeah. So I treat a, a variety of pelvic floor issues. So we talked about urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, pelvic organ prolapse, but I also treat um, pain conditions like interstitial cystitis or any kind of uh, bladder dysfunction. Okay. Um, I treat um, high tone pelvic floor dysfunction, so sexual dysfunction. If a woman's having either painful sexual um, intercourse or she's just having pain all the time in the pelvic region, we do treat that. 
Um, my treatments usually range from very conservative, from dietary changes to physical therapy to surgical intervention. So there's many different things that we can do for treatment, not just surgery. Okay, and that actually was my next question. Yeah. You're reading my mind. <laughs> do women typically need surgery and to, um, to get to their normal activities and... Not necessarily. Yeah, no. Okay, and um, yeah, a lot of women come in here and say, do I need surgery or not, doc? And, you know, that's so sad for me because there's a lot of things that we can do that is not surgically um, oriented. Um, so, for example, interstitial cystitis is a pain condition of the bladder. And women can get really great relief just from cutting out some trigger foods or things in their diet that are triggering this pain cycle. Uh, I always say spicy foods, alcohol, and we see that sometimes with overactive bladder, which is part of that urgency, gotta go, gotta go feeling. Certain foods and beverages will trigger the bladder, irritate the bladder, and cause these pain conditions or irritative conditions where you feel like you're visiting the bathroom a lot to pee or can't make it to the bathroom and having incontinence issues or getting up at night to go. Okay, so um, when would we? What is the, when would be an example of when women might have to get surgery? Is that is there some sense yeah, with that as well? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. For urinary incontinence, usually um, we start with conservative management, okay. dietary changes, physical pelvic floor physical therapy, which is its own specific form of physical therapy, mm -hmm. um, where you work one on one with a woman physical therapist. She do, can do external and some internal work to get to those pelvic floor muscles, which are. Um, I should have brought my pelvic model. I have a pelvic model. Uh, basically layers of pelvic floor muscles that are all basically shaped like a hammock okay. that keep all of her, our guts and insides in. Yeah. Sometimes because those muscles become very weak, they have to be strengthened again and you have to reteach your brain um, to understand how to control those pelvic floor muscles and your bladder and your bowel. Um, and pelvic floor physical therapy is a wonderful standard of care, conservative management for a lot of things that we treat, including urinary incontinence. Um, so surgery really comes into play for third and fourth line managements of urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, and pelvic organ prolapse. Okay. Um, a lot of things can be treated conservatively, like I keep saying. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but surgical management is, is, is my specialty. And when we do get to surgery, that's mm -hmm. really um, when I'm most able to help a lot of these conditions because I'm so specially trained. Which is exciting. And yeah. It's great for all of us out there um, who really need you. So <laughs> thank you. Um, so now um, if someone um, schedules an appointment with you, how would they do that? Um, do women need to make an appointment with you directly? Do we need a referral? Like how, how do we go about that? So right now I'm by referral only. So okay. um, talk to your primary care provider or um, your OBGYN or urologist. They're all very familiar with the conditions that I treat. So they'll be able to provide a little bit more information yeah. and then write a referral to me. And um, if I'm not able to help you, at least I can refer you to the appropriate people that can. Yeah. So that's yeah. great. It's really exciting. We well, have lots of uh, equipment. Yeah. To... <laughs> yeah. And we're so here. It's different. great. Yeah, we're here in my office. Um, the, what's behind me is the Eurodynamic machine, and a lot of women freak out when they see it. We call it our little torture device. It's not really torture. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a way that we work up women that have complicated urinary incontinence. And before we go for major vaginal surgery, a lot of times when I reposition the vagina um, and resuspend it, if you're having pelvic organ prolapse, you yeah. can change the angle a little bit of the vagina and ultimately of the urethra, causing you to have what we call stress urinary incontinence. When you cough, laugh, jump, sneeze, you leak urine. So it may yeah. not be a condition that you actually thought you had before surgery, but maybe something that you have after because I resuspended everything. So we do a test here and basically we put a catheter in your bladder and we fill it up with water and ask you a series of questions and we have a good old time play some music and talk about the weather and have a little essential oils in here. And basically we just get a lot of information from that. We get a lot of information of what your your bladder is doing, the pressures inside the bladder, oh. the muscles around the, the vagina. And basically we make an assessment from there and then I further counsel you about surgery and what you need versus what you don't need. Yeah. So. That's really interesting and very thoughtful, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm trying to think of a nice yeah, way to say nice. it. Yeah, it's very nice. We also have in-office cystoscopy, so that's when I look inside the bladder with a little telescope, 
That's indicated for a few other things, but we can yeah. do that right here in the office without going to the OR. So that's pretty neat. That is very nice. Yes, yeah. that's great. Thank you. Well, this has all been amazing insight. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything else you want to share before we wrap it up? I don't think so. Huh. I, there's so much to talk about. I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, come see me. I'd love yeah. to see you guys. And uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, get a referral and head on over. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Dawson, for being here. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, and we will see you next month for our next Facebook Live discussion. Take care. Bye.